Hey guys, so before I get into the Yayo FAQ, I've been working with the Nilu mains Reddit and Discords recently. We've been adding resources onto the Reddit. I helped redo their Discord FAQ. It's really good now. I've also been trying to work on things like infographics and soft goals, which should be very helpful resources for the Nilu community. If you've been thinking about joining the Reddit or Discord, now is a good time. How is Yao Yao in Nilu teams? This is a very common question I've been getting for the past month. If I have to start with a basic summary, Yao Yao is a new on-fielder or quick swap dendro for Nilu. She's pretty fun to play and gives Nilu even more team options. Yao Yao being a 4 star and she doesn't necessarily need constellations, this is very helpful. You can consider Nilu even more accessible now than before. Yao Yao is also pretty good. It's quite obvious when you examine her kit that, that Hoyaverse intentionally designed Yao Yao to work well with Nilu. The Dendro resistance that she gets with her burst and healing makes her very suitable to tank Bloom, Explosion, Recoil and, and actually I also find her fairly comfortable to play. Just don't expect her to actually be a meta improvement over the old teams. For how I play, I also don't think she's the best option but you might prefer her more it's subjective. There's also a lot of questionable information about Nilu teams recently. Always remember, when it comes to Nilu, just learn to take everything with a grain of salt and test yourself. Calculations and theoretical stuff stand no chance compared to real gameplay testing and experience. Does Yao Yao need lots of EM? If you want to know her build, as with all Nilu teammates, it's not easy to tell and requires lots of trial and error. But so far in my experience, both from what I've played and also watching lots of gameplay, unless you're playing her with Candice, then you don't really need to build hardcore for EM. I see a lot of people doing that and I think it's a bit of a mistake. I have to base this Candice opinion on Billy Billy speedrun footage since unfortunately I don't even have C0 Candice yet. But the logic makes sense, Candice gives Yaya Hydro basic attacks, so now with both her Dendro attacks and Hydro attacks, she's probably going to be making lots of reactions. But it seems with all the other Force teammate slots, like with Kokomi or Xingqiu or Yelan, Yaya doesn't need too much EM. You can build her with crit like Kole, and you can get EM from a set bonus like Gilded Dreams. Just make sure not to neglect her HP so you can do HP Sands, Dendro Goblet and a Crit Circlet. And also this seems fairly logical. When you look at our constellations, this C1 with Dendro damage and stamina is clearly for Yao Yao. And her C2 reducing ER requirements so you can go HP timepiece more easily. And her C4 giving you extra EM. So this is Hoyaverse telling you that they kind of intended her to be built well rounded, not just stacking EM. For weapons, I've seen a lot of people use Deathmatch, but you can also just use Dragon's Bane for both the Crypt build and the Candice EM build. But one issue I have noticed is if you play her with Candice, both Yao Yao and Candice might want Dragon's Bane, so you might have some issues there. One last thing I did want to say on the builds topic, if you didn't realise already, but because Yao Yao does extra healing, this means if you're playing her with Kokomi, there's not that much drawbacks to going full EM on Kokomi. I would say there's zero drawbacks because you theoretically aren't going to be spending enough time in Kokomi's burst mode to take advantage of Ocean Huge Clam. However, I have found in practice, I don't play Yaya on field as much as I thought I would have. This team kind of plays more like quick swap. Does Yaya free up a Hydro teammate slot? Also, what are the best teams looking like? As I mentioned, Yao Yao's strength is creating more teams for Nilu, especially budget teams, for example, here with Xing Chou, or if you have C6 Candice, she works. Theoretically, this helps players who don't have Kokomi, which is very good. However, as we can see in the Akasha database, actually still, the most popular Nilu Yao Yao team still uses Kokomi. It's also pretty logical if you think about it, and this is a mistake I think a lot of people make when judging Kokomi. Even if you don't need Kokomi's healing, she still has big AoE and can do lots of damage. That's the full strength of Kokomi. Yao Yao even lets Kokomi easily run full EM in case you were a player who was worried about healing. So you can move your Kokomi over to the Flower of Paradise Lost or Gilded Dream sets. And on the other side, 
Personally, I think people kind of overrate Xingqiu or Yelan's damage in these Bloom teams, especially because you haven't got Kozawa's buffs or that much buffs overall, and you can't have both high crit and high EM at the same time. Yes, don't forget, they will both be triggering reactions in Nilu teams. Then there's also the obvious single target focus that they both have, which does limit their AoE potential in Nilu teams. However, this is kind of all nitpicking. I still like playing these teams for diversity. Just as I mentioned in the beginning, don't expect it to be a new meta and overthrow old teams. As we can see in the recent NGA Nilu Cup, speed violence are still finding success with the old Kole team, or even Triple Hyjo with Xingqiu. Yao Yao can work in speedruns, but she isn't at the top. Another interesting thing is that the Yao Yao Candice team has actually performed very well. Unless this abyss is the exception, it does seem that Yao Yao Candice might have more potential than Yao Yao Xingqiu. Unfortunately, I don't have Candice at all. Hopefully I can get her soon, but I'll have to see how this team performs in future abysses. Also, if you want to see another comparison from someone in our community, I recommend checking out this vid. I'll also put the link in the description. It's not perfectly mathematical because it uses their own account, but just make sure to read the video description for their thoughts. Will Yao Yao get better over time? For future potential, she has some nice constellations. All of these seem pretty good for her. Energy, EM and more danger application, more healing. So you can look forward to getting her cons. I still am only at C1. However, I'm also still only at C2 for Kole and her C4 and C6 are very powerful too. This C4 is a team buff which Yao Yao does not have. So both characters can improve in the future as you get more constellations on them. In terms of Yao Yao Candice teams, I feel like it's gonna be difficult or rare for you guys to get Candice's constellations to play this team, but it does seem like a team that we need to keep an eye out for in the future.